Today, we're going to talk about, of course, the match between Red Star Belgrade and Barcelona. But first of all, I got a question for you people. Are Barcelona candidates, favorites for the Champions League? Would you would you put the culé hat in the ring? I think that maybe yes. I think that maybe you could start saying so because Barcelona are right now sitting in the sixth position with most most goal scores in the competition already facing Bayern Munich, which is an insane proposition. Is it getting boring? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little bit bored, actually, watching Barcelona score so many goals. It's getting repetitive. It's a habit nowadays. And that's something you really cannot say about too many teams in the world right now. So that's a huge pleasure. It's actually a tremendous pleasure to have that possibility, you know, to just relax by the end of games at the end of the day, because we are blowing teams, no matter who's coming our way, they are getting defeated. They're going to get humiliated by Barcelona because they score one, two, three goals. It seems like we're going to get bored of scoring more than three goals. It's it's actually fair to start saying that Barcelona is the best team in the world, because I think after the week that they had, they certainly are. They certainly, certainly are. Yes, what's going on, guys? Como están? And this is a live recording, actually, from, well, a stream that we did on a new platform called Big Up. It's a platform like Twitch, like Kick.com, but it's mainly just focused for football content. So that's where you can find me after every game now. We're going to be testing how it goes and see if we can make it part of our, uh, you know, weekly routine. You know, after every game, we come here and discuss the game. And afterwards, I'm going to, if you want to be live and interact with me, that's the way to do it. And then if not, you can watch it uh, later in my YouTube channel, just like always, like normal. So that's what we're going to do. And the first thing first is we have to discuss the game. We have to discuss that Barcelona here come with a victory of 5-1, a tremendous victory in the UCL. Like I've been saying in the intro, it doesn't really matter which teams they face. They always seem to now score more than three goals. It's like, for me, actually, what I wanted to happen with this team is actually happening, which is that I want this team to start strong and try to, you know, blow team outs out of the water, blow teams out of the feature or whatever, and then capitalize on that and, you know, relax a little bit, then introduce new substitutions, and then you can dictate the game as you please. And that's precisely what Hansi Flick is doing at the moment because he's getting um, players like Pau Victor, he's getting Fermin minutes, he's getting... Gabi around, he played, I think, 24 minutes or even more, 30, 24 minutes I think he played today. Um, we can talk about Rafinha getting rest. Lamin Jamal is someone who I, I personally really thought he should be rested a little bit earlier in this game. I'm not sure why he didn't decide to go with that, particularly with Ansu Fati on the bench. But yeah, well... I don't make those sort of decisions. So yeah, who was your mom? What do you mean my mom? What does it have to do anything with this? <laughs> my mom, my man of the match. Okay, that's a, a, a far better question. Um, what's the man of the match for me? Um, I would say the man of the match for me, particularly in this game, I'm going to have to go with Jules Kunde. I think it's going to be with Kunde because I think that in a game where we had Gerard Martin for one hand side as a... As a alternative left back and then the right hand side where we where we most of the time attack I think Kunde looked like a very good outlet because normally we see him as a center back but we know from Pistama Sevilla and with the French national team he's always been a, a, a tremendous right back and getting this hat trick of assists today in the second half and actually having the world of football you know bleach reports all the media outlets recording that I think it's it's tremendous so I really do like that that it works for for that he works really hard for the team and his credit is getting recognized particularly in this game and we just attack all throughout the 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 game on that right hand side so that's something so that's something really really good for for us because we see that Kunde can be a very important outlet for the team. Um, Vigo Bruce says. Uh, if I see Martin Wallach, if I see Martin starting again, what does Wallach mean? Huh? And, and good evening with you too as well. So yeah, I think Gerard Martin is, is a bit of a struggle. I gotta agree. The, the goal for Red Star is actually a, a mistake from him because he's the guy who's well rotated, right? And he doesn't have the same consistency and, and cohesion with the other defenders in our team. And you could see that he stepped a little bit on, uh, on side and kept, you know, Silas or Silas, the right winger from, from Red Star on side. And that was the way that, uh, that they scored. So just like always, before I continue, 
continue reading your comments, we're going to go right away into talking a little bit about the starting 11, because the starting 11 for me is a good way for us to start the game and see how, how it actually developed, see how everything developed. So with Big Up, it's really easy because I can just go here and share my screen as I want to. So I can go screen share and I can go here to this tab. So now let me go and like this. This is how I want to, I want for it to look. So on screen right now, you can see the starting the, the starting team for both sides. I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger for you guys to be able to see. And well, Barcelona started with Iñaki Peña, which for me right now, you could say is a starting goalkeeper. I think there's no problem with saying that. I'm, I'm just wanting to see a little bit more of Chesney if it's possible. I would like to see Chesney. That's one thing I would like to see Chesney just to play a little bit more games, just to see where he's at as a sort of player. Then they went on with Jules Kunde, Pau Covarsi, Inigo Martinez, and Gerard Martin. Gerard Martin is a surprise. It's still a surprise because for me, he has not been playing well in all of the matches. And even here in this game, Sofa score, it says that it's the worst rated player so far in the pitch alongside, not, not on the pitch for Barcelona. So that's really, I think, a, a, a problem for, for us right now. Iñaki Peña, I mean, is the goalkeeper. I think it's fair. You could say he had a bad game. Uh, but come on, I think Gerard Martin is the one who doesn't really look like he has a place in the team whatsoever. I do not know what Flick sees in him. I just don't think he looks coordinated enough. He doesn't look uh, physical enough. I mean, he's imposing with the size and everything that he has. But it's like, come on, I just don't think that he looks cut for, I think, first division football. And the same with Sergio Dominguez. Like, not every single La Masia graduate is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. So that is something that we have to consider, right? It's not always going to happen. In the midfield, Frankie de Jong, Marc Asado, just like always. Frankie de Jong getting their first start um, since returning from injury. And then behind the striker, we had Pérez in number 10, Rafinha and Lamin Yamal with Robert Lewandowski being the number nine in this team. Wild whilst uh, Red Star started with Marco Illich in the goalkeeper position, Young Wu Siu, um, Giga, Spasic, Rodic, Maximovic, who is a youngster of 17 years of age who said he was going to prove that he's better than Lamin Yamal, which <laughs> incredible. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, well, El Elsnich, Kanga, Krunic, ex uh, AC Milan, ex Empoli, I think he was actually as well. And then Envupa with Endai, not Envupa, that's Celias. I'm just going to call him Celias. Celias and uh, Endai as the number nine. So those were the two lineups for this team. You could see that Red Star wanted to, uh, you know, populate the midfield a little bit more with more players there. But certainly, um, I think that Barcelona's midfield and the way that they're playing right now, no matter, not, not if Real Madrid and Bayern Munich did not cause any trouble, then is they are not going to cost any trouble. You know, Red Star are not going to cost any. So uh, that's what we have from this game. Those are starting lineups. And another point that we really have to mention, I think talking about uh, Frankie de Jong here in the midfield, I was surprised that Frankie de Jong did not play a good game. Do you think, guys, that he played a good game? For me, Frankie de Jong did not have a, a great match, actually. I think he was a little bit... Um, he needed to find his rhythm and the difference, the, the contrast that I saw between Casado and Frank de Jong is just really, really big. You know, the, the two players were having different forms and, and whatnot. They just look really, really different. Frank de Jong, like coming in, just getting settled. Uh, Frank or well, Casado looked like on another different rhythm. He looked really, really good. Um, Larson says Iñaki had a bad game, but Martin made it worse for him. Yeah, 100%. Buga hates La Masia. Confirm, I do not hate La Masia. Like, literally, if I have a kid one day, which I hope I do, I'm going to take him to La Masia. Like, literally, that's I, I'm not joking. I'm going to take him there. I'm, not, I'm I'm gonna take him there. He's gonna be the next. I want my kid to be a. Let's. He will be. I don't know what position. Maybe he'll be like a Jordi Alba, but right back for Barcelona. That's what he'll. Incredible delusion by an AI generated 70 year old who thought he could talk smack. <laughs> That's insane. Incredible. I I bang. I, I love that. I'm sorry, but the young needs to hold bench and warm it when Casado comes out in the 7 8th minute. Look, Frank the young, Frankie the young and Casado are not similar players whatsoever. They're not similar players. I think what you're saying there. Could could work generally because in the last 20 minutes 10 minutes you see players like um the, the game is a little more broken you know there's a lot of more space to cover and that's where frank de jong can really drive the ball forward and go as 
as high as he wants. However, uh, throughout the 90 minutes that we saw today, I do not know whether so far uh, Frank Leon can do the job that exclusively Casado is doing. I think Casado is such a unique player and we don't have any other midfielder right now in the team that I think can do a job like him. I think that actually someone who could do a job like that would have been Sergi Roberto, but we don't have him anymore. And Casado right now is the only player that has that box-to-box ability to go as high up the field as he wants, but also track back. He has the tenacity. He has the stamina. He's always there. Him and Jules Kunde, actually, I'll throw you a fact right now. They are the only players for Barcelona to play every single minute in the UCL so far this season for us. So that tells you how important a uh, flick sees of Casado and how important he looks at Kunde. Like Kunde is a player right now in the right back position that the drop between him and the other player is huge. You know, the same I would say for Balde and Gerard Martin, but for whatever reason, Gerard Martin is like fancy flicks kid or something because, because he's getting a lot of minutes. But Casado. I think we've seen other players that can play there. Now we got Gabi, we got Pedri, we got De Jong, and still he remains, you know? He never gets substituted off. Casado is such a crucial player, and I love that for us. It's a huge search. It's, it's a different profile that we haven't seen before, so I'm very happy that we have that with the team right now. So it's good for having someone like Casado there in the squad. We have to talk about another player, 100%, that is... Robert Lewandowski today as well. Uh, but before that, let me see. Boy, I know you love the young. I watched the pod, but if an offer comes, I'm not saying no. Look, I like the young as well. And I think this is sort of the first or second season. Maybe the first season where I actually do agree that maybe, maybe the young could be a better player elsewhere. I think that right now for Barcelona, that I'm looking, I'm continuing looking at the squad right now. And I just don't know how it fits. I don't know where it fits because he would have, uh, you know, entered between I think the young and Casado on paper should be the best double pivot but today wasn't the best experience the young is still getting very back much into match sharpness so he needs to get back into it as fast as possible but Pedri Casado has been a tremendous you know combination so far and Dani Olmo whenever he plays he's even better so I do not know where or what exactly would I do in terms of changing it up, you know? I, I really do not know. I think those two players are insane the way they're playing right now. And I just think that this midfield should not get touched at all. Uh, Larson, I really hope Flick can implement the mindset into the midfield that none of them are certain to start, but more they're all on rotations. I agree. I like that. I like that this rotations is is constantly changing, you know, this, this midfield. It seems like it. It seems like it. And particularly, I think the easiest thing is because they're are youngsters you know if Casado had I don't know like this is what happened with Marcelo at Fluminense in Brazil like he's a multiple Champions League winner he's a he has been a captain for several clubs for Real Madrid as well a total left back and it's like he's now a, a substitute bench player one or was because he refused and he didn't want to enter the game because he felt like yeah I don't want to have any impact you know in these last four minutes and the manager got mad at him and then they you know release him as a player from the club so that's a little bit different I think in a situation like that with someone like a player who has that experience that history yeah that that can happen i think you can get mad and then they will have a problem with it and you need to make all of them you know understand their positions but here they're all youngsters and i think for a youngster for someone even younger than i am it's very easy to say hey bro relax just grab yourself i don't know a cup of coffee be chill just relax and and it's gonna be good it's gonna be constant it's gonna be easy to interchange your positions because you are youngsters you're gonna learn you're gonna play you're gonna have so many career ahead of him you have so much career ahead of you so it doesn't really matter there's a lot of uh, projects for the future for you guys a lot of matches to play so I think there's no issue there I really do not know there's an issue hi Ali como estas amigo no player is bigger than any club yeah exactly what, what Larson said there like here at Barcelona I don't see that happening I don't feel that's a problem at the moment I really don't don't feel this a problem. Um, what else? So yeah, I wanted to talk about Robert Lewandowski um, because for me, Lewandowski today, apart with the two goals he gets, now Lewandowski is entering the high mile club of the Champions League. <laughs> Literally, he's entering that club because he's one goal away from getting 100 goals that only two other players in the history of the competitions have gotten. And that's uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo, I think, has like 146, maybe something around that level and Messi has 126 or 29 something something about uh, that 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 margin right about that number but Lewandowski is getting close and today he could have if he got just one more goal what he took one of those chances in the first half we would have been seeing Lewandowski with 100 goals everywhere now on social media and whatnot but because he's really becoming you know a legend of the game and I think we are here we have to understand and have to see have to recognize how big of a player actually Lewandowski is 
and how good it is for someone, a team like Barcelona, to have someone like him in the ranks. I think it's really, really good. So Lewandowski there, I'm pretty happy that he's getting the recognition of this team with, with Hansi Flick. I think Hansi Flick is getting the best out of Lewandowski. And you can see that, for instance, the two goals that he scored, the first two goals are just a complete poacher. Just a complete poacher. It's the advanced forward that you want to see. Just play within the 18-yard the box. Just be there, hungry, constantly trying to get back into it trying to find yourself a position to get into the game. He's always looking for spaces in the area. That's what you want for your number nine. I, I Look, I like Xavi and what he did and whatnot, but one thing that he did wrong, in my opinion, was ask Lewandowski to do too much, or maybe this, or he just didn't know how to get the service into Lewandowski. But Flick now is much more direct. He's like, I don't care how you get the ball into it. Just get it to him, cross him, uh, do a low cross. Uh, take a man on, try everything on your arsenal, on your skill set, and try to get the ball into the back of the net. And I think that's precisely what Lewandowski right now is showing at the moment and what Barcelona are doing because it really is helping us out in the sense that you can see that the first goal is a long shot from Rafinha of the the or that's the second. I don't know. I, I got them mixed match, mixed and match, matched. But a, a shot of the post and then Lewandowski is just there in free open space. Bang, easy to to score a goal. And then the second one is literally he scores with his with his hamstring. So it's like it doesn't matter what area of or part of his body he's gonna use. He's always gonna get the ball into the back of the net. So that's tremendous. A, a very good job for Lewandowski there, and I'm really happy for it. Um, I don't know if we have to sacrifice the leaks, says Vigo Bruce. What are you saying? Uh, okay, let me read. Lewa, if he wins us the UCL, build him is the UCL build him and flick a statue I don't care and I want it so much I haven't been starved for the trophy for 10 years <laughs> um yeah I would love to win the UCL really and I think that Lewandowski would enjoy this UCL even a lot more than what he would have won with Bayern that's my hot take who knows we have to ask him and Larson says who do you think should be Lewa's apprentice aka take over for him when he goes away I think a very good name taking into account the way that we're playing right now I think Victor Guilherme from what I've seen the last video that I uploaded on the channel is an analysis on him and a little bit of a reaction after what he did against Manchester City. And I think that he's tremendous. You know, the, the way that he scored his first goal, he's a player very similar to Lewandowski, that he can create chances for himself, but very much he's that poacher sort of player. He creates chances for himself more so than someone like Erling Haaland. Um, so if you're looking for the most similar profile, I think it will be Victor Guilherme, while someone like Haaland is just a pure goal machine. But I mean, there I think Haaland is a generational talent. You know, Haaland is the one who, by the end of the day, who's going to be up there with Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo up there with Lewandowski as well as the players to watch for the future but in the Champions League high scoring charts I don't know go good as I don't think he might be there but he's still a very good player and if there's some chance to you know struck a deal there I think and not spend too much money I think that's the way to go um Vigo Bruce says does he become a legend if Lewa wins a UCL or an icon of a club I think he he already is an icon of a club like for me I'm still I'm gonna remember that I'm gonna remember remember Lewandowski like maybe at the same level that I remember someone like Ronaldinho I think both of them I mean Ronaldinho still achieved a lot <laughs> he won the Ballon d'Or of course um he won the UCL with us but I I still feel in that sort of stature of player a player that came in had an impact in the club and even though we haven't won that much yet with him it's like we have won stuff you know we have won La Liga we have won the Supercopa of España against Real Madrid with a baile so it shows it shows and I think he deserves that recognition I think Lewandowski does deserve the recognition of being a top class player he really is a, a tremendous guy a tremendous tremendous player I think somebody else that we have to mention then if we're talking about today's match is Inigo Martinez Inigo Martinez is one of those center backs that is not getting that recognition but for me the best thing that this Barcelona team did for the very first half is that in 13 minutes it's very difficult to say this but in 13 minutes Barcelona was already very in 13 minutes Barcelona were already challenging for the scoreline you know Barcelona were already worthy of getting that scoreline they already wanted to they already had reasons to show that they needed to be one up in the in the scoreline I think that's the most important thing I think that's the most important um, thing to show really for me it's very that merit that you have and even if you're not able to put the goal into the back of the net having the possibility to then score from a set piece with Inigo Martinez in a way that Rafinha put an incredible ball into him. Those certain things are just out of this world. I really do like the way that we're playing with Inigo Martinez and with Rafinha in, in that combination. And it takes Rafinha up with the goal as well in this game to 
already, I think it's 22 goal or 21 assists, all in all competitions, goals and assists, you know, goal contributions. I think he has 10 assists and 12 goals or the other way around. Anyhow, it doesn't really matter because he's absolutely incredible. Having those numbers by the time this season, we're in November and it's like this dude is already racking up the scoring charts. So very good from Rafinha. And like I said, I wanted to praise Inigo Martinez because it's a tool that Barcelona are going to use out of the out of the get-go, I think can really help us out. Uh, we take a look at... Um, Pau Cubarsi now on his injury as well. I am I'm, I'm a little bit worried for this position at the moment because we don't have any other player right now that can enter there. You know, Christensen is out injured. Araujo is injured as well. Cerro Domingo is going to be the guy who plays there then in the next game against La Sociedad because it looked very nasty, the cut that Cubarsi got. So if you didn't, if you weren't able to see, uh, let me see if I'm possible if I can find the cut from QRC. But yeah, look at this, look at this photo, man. It's 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 not up for the for the wimps. You have to actually, you know, look at this cut from from QRC. It's a deep, deep cut, man. Deep cut. Deep cut QRC. He I don't know if he can play. Maybe the wound closes. He'll be able to play with something here, you know, like a like a patch or something like that. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> look at this meme insane. <laughs> So yeah, um, let's see. That looks, so, dude. That guy's gonna kill it with the ladies with that with that on his face. They're gonna be like, "Hey, what's up, man?" And it's like ten stitches. Wow, that's insane, dude. Oh my god, that's up. Yeah, they took the photo like Puyol. <laughs> that's crazy. But but very good, very good actually. Paco RC, damn, damn, Kuarsi, get get back into it, man. He's gonna he's gonna come stronger after this. I I guarantee you, guy. I guarantee you. Is that a cut on his nose? No, I think it's just blood all the way. Like blood splatting around his face maybe something like that but but yeah so insane stuff there um so that's cool to see for you guys i think now i'm a little bit worried if he plays against i so sad i think 100 is that we are going to be having somebody rested, you know, through the international break. Kubarsi is potentially not going to be playing the international break now because of this. Hopefully he doesn't, and it means he comes back stronger after it. So I'm really, really just a little bit nervous for this game against Real Sociedad. I'm not going to lie. But after that, after thinking about it, I actually think it can help us a little bit, this cut. <laughs> it's, of course, unfortunate, but man, prime Kubarsi, I'm telling you, he's coming. He is coming. He's cooking. Let 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 him cook. Let Kubarsi cook. I think it's all a tactic by Flick to make him stronger. It's all a tactic, guys. It's all up here. It's all up here. Is here you are gonna be able to see what it looks like, what the table for for the current Champions League looks like. So on screen we have Liverpool being number first with Barcelona at sixth. Sixth, I think, is a good position for, for us right now, particularly after you know losing the first game against Monaco. But look at that. Barcelona has ten goals. Ten goals. Ten goals, guys. We have the we're the highest scoring team so far in the Champions League. That's insane. That's honestly very very good. So I'm pretty happy with our position at the moment. We're going to have to see Paris is out right now because Atletico Madrid beat them in the last in the last minute with a 93rd winner from Angel Correa. He always comes clutch for, for Atleti. He's like the real super sub, honestly. He deserves a lot of recognition. So that's right now the table. So Barcelona is sitting in a good position at the moment with four match days left. Um, and then Barcelona, I think the next game is against Brest, which is going to be a very interesting game. They're at fourth right now. They haven't lost a single game yet. I think so. So it's going to be interesting to face them. Um... That's going to be at Barcelona, I think. Yes, and then we're going to be facing Dortmund, then we have Atala Benfica, and then we have Atalanta. So still four very intense games, four very good good matchups. I don't think they're the easier easiest matchups. Like Barcelona can still be out if they lose all the games. Hopefully that, of course, doesn't happen. But there are good matches. Atalanta, Dortmund, particularly because they're very close to us. Um, even Brest as well. Brest and Benfica are going to be interesting matches. Regard, interesting matches. Next one is against Liverpool and then Atalanta. That's for Real Madrid, I think. Real Madrid have to beat... Real Madrid have to go to Anfield. Then they have to go to Atalanta. I think then they play Salzburg at home. And then they play... They end up with playing... Uh, they played somebody else. Who else that... Ramarit play, Ramarit play. Atletico Madrid are having a hard time, honestly, as well. I mean, they're at least right now in the qualification spots, but Atleti, for instance, they have to play, if I'm wrong, Bayer Leverkusen. They have to play, uh, Bayer Leverkusen, I think, is the hardest. Then they play, like, something like Sturmgrass. They play uh, Salzburg, I think, as well. And, and yeah, so they really have to get wins, Atleti, because I think Atleti and Paris right now are the most surprised that are down here. Milan made a, a good comeback after beating Ramarit. They really needed that victory. So let's see how it goes. Uh, let's see how it 
Michaels while we watch our guy here, Pau Cuarcy. Inigo Martinez got man of the match. What? What? Inigo Martinez? Oh my God. He, I mean, he did amazing. And I think he really had a good game overall, but I wouldn't have given him the, the man of the match. I really don't, don't know. But but yeah, I mean, kudos to him. Kudos to him. Amazing. He got the goal. This guy is, is I think he's leading the back line perfectly. So I think that's why we're seeing this from him, right? He's leading the back line in an amazing way. So 